<laughs> BYU softball season opener is coming up Thursday, February 8th in Hawaii against Missouri, Kansas City. The home opener, which is also the Big 12 opener, is Thursday, March 7th against Texas Tech. And our next guest is a longtime head coach of BYU softball. He's won 800 games over his 21 years at BYU and preparing to take his program into the Big 12 for the first time. And that's in the weeks and months ahead. It's always a pleasure to have Gordon Eakin on the Wise Guys. Coach, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So good to have you, Coach. I don't know if Tyler's advice, does that apply to softball too? Like the two sayings that we remember from the Haas family was, um, do your work early. That probably applies to softball, right? And then he said, the ball finds energy. Like all the, the big plays, are, the people that play with energy, the ball seems to find them. And they, I don't know, could, do those apply to softball or not? Well, I'm probably not in Tyler Hawes's league, but I would say... Hey, you he, have more wins than he <laughs> does. Yes, you do. You do. <laughs> well, that's because he's a lot younger than me, so he'll get there. <laughs> but I would say the I'd say he's right on, especially with the with the playing, playing with energy comment. Yeah. yeah. When I was yeah. a Little League coach, the ball always found where my fielders were not. <laughs> and that wasn't a good thing for us. Hey, uh, it's uh, 50 degrees today. It was sunny supposed to be nice for the next three or four days. Did you get outside and does, did it feel like softball season today? We did. We got outside and it, it felt great. It was dirt was nice. The Couldn't smell the grass quite yet, but it was really nice out there today. Yeah, that's good. Brenda, my wife was telling me the other day, she goes, do you smell that? And I said, what? She says, it's like it's thawing. Like, I feel like I almost smell <laughs> grass. Like she almost smelled grass, she said. I said, okay, spring is just around the corner, which yeah, means baseball and softball. This weekend. Yeah, this it's going to snow again. It's going to snow again this weekend. Well, baseball and softball coaches know what grass smells like for sure. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you, and you, get, you get to go smell some grass over in Manoa, Hawaii, um, as, you, as you open up on February 8th against Missouri, Kansas City. So that's kind of a fun break to get over there. And how important is that to take the team on the road and team build a little bit, but also have an opportunity to play in good weather over there? Well, we, we are primarily going to Hawaii to take our – um, three players that are from the island back home to play in front of their oh, their families. I think we owe that to them, and and their families turn out great. It's going to be a, a great environment um, and a great experience for um, our three players from over there. And so it, it's it's great competition. It's paradise. So I think you add all those things together, and it's it's very a very great place for us to start. Oh, yeah. You had me at paradise. Yeah. I didn't even hear the word competition. We've been volunteering to go to any warm place and do a broadcast live from there. I I think Dave and I should call that game over there. Coach, Power 5 softball is here. Does it uh, – you're still a little bit of ways away, but does it feel like it? Uh, watching football and basketball every night, it sure feels like it, yeah. uh, especially basketball right now. It's – it is a dogfight every single night out there in every game in the Big 12, and and that's the way softball is going to be. So, yeah, it definitely feels like it. Yeah, Coach, in, in football, you have to have a quarterback. That's like we go into the Super Bowl. I'm picking the Chiefs just – and I had nothing against Purdy, but because they have Mahomes. Right. He's been there. You know, in basketball, you got to have a point guard. Get you into your stuff. In softball, you got to have pitching. So talk to us a little bit about that group and what you like about them coming into this Big 12 season. Yeah, softball is still a game of pitching. I mean, hitting has come a long way and and really has flexed its muscles in in softball the last few years. But it's still, uh, if you have that stopper in the middle, uh, that's still the most important thing. And we have very talented pitching, but with the exception of Chloe Temples, who's our only senior we're very young and somewhat in, inexperienced in this circle. Case in Korth returns after a really good freshman year last year as a sophomore, but then everybody else, Alyssa Aguilar has been out hurt for two, two straight years and everybody else is freshmen. So we're very talented, but we're, we're very young and we're going to have to mature in a hurry. If your rotation is uh, temples and Korth, can you do it with a two-person rotation, or do you do you need that third or fourth arm? Actually, softball used to be where you could get by with one or two. Yeah, but it's become a lot more like baseball now, where the powerful offenses you you need a staff, and so we're going to rely on all six of our players and stack them in their differences from each other and their um, 
and their pitch differences and, you know, lefty righty matchups. We'll do a lot more of that this year than we've ever done before, because in the big 12 uh, and beyond, you're going to need to do that in order to, to be successful. Hey, Hunter, Ava is on the preseason all big 12 team. What are your expectations for Ava this, this season? Yeah, Hunter is, um, she's a great athlete. So I hate to say that she, she's a game changer offensively because she's also a very good first baseman. But if you talk about Hunter, you, you certainly can't talk about her without saying that she is a force at the plate and she can change any game against any pitcher with her power and, and her, I mean, she's mentally tough. There's no situation that's too big for her. And so Hunter is going to be a huge part of our success this year. And, I think she's going to have a breakout year being her senior year. BYU softball coach Gordon Eakins on the Wise Guys tonight, live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and YSGuys.com. We're on all over the world tonight. We did our roll call earlier, and uh, and a lot of folks getting ready for spring sports because nope, we're getting tired of winter. Nobody signed in from Hawaii today. Not yet. If you're out there, Hawaii, but we've got the Philippines in the house Is tonight, the coach. Yet? We've Are got they still in the beach? Panama in the house. We've got uh, uh, Philippines, Philippines Singapore, in the, uh, Singapore. Oh, we think Japan's probably in, and he's just not. But but no Hawaii yet. So somebody from Hawaii needs to chime in and tell and tell Coach that you're going to be there to support him on February 8th. Let's talk about Violet Zavodnik, who uh, really had a tough season with injuries last year. I remember seeing her get hit in the head in one of our broadcasts, and it just it just got in the way of a, this tremendous athlete. What kind of bounce back do you expect from Violet this season? She's had a great fall. I mean, she's back to being the player that was the 23rd rated player in the country last year. Yeah. You know, she can put up 20 home runs. She can hit 400 plus. She's got a can of, of an arm in center field. And I don't know if the, you know, you never want to really talk about having an injury free year, but I don't know if she could have worse luck than she had last year with three concussions. Yeah. And a, I mean, just on and on and on where she could never really be violent, but I, I think Violet's going to have a great year for us. Could be under the radar a little bit. I have a feeling when the postseason mm-hmm. all-conference team comes out, there'll be more than than Hunter on there representing BYU. You're going in and a little bit of an unknown, although teams know the level that you guys have played at for a number of years. The team's picked seventh in the 10-team Big 12. What's your thought on going into this thing preseason at seventh? Well, I'll let other people who are smarter than me decide where we – where we're going to fall. I think we're, I mean, the, the big 12 is very talented in softball. I think it's the number one softball conference in the country with Oklahoma being the dominant team. And yeah. I mean, I think Oklahoma had what seven or eight players on the all conference. It's team. like their whole so, team was on. Yeah. That. Yeah. And, and rightfully so. I mean, they lost one game last year. And um, so when you, to, to get more players on the all conference team, it's hard when Oklahoma and Texas really dominate that, but with those two teams, it is extremely talented across the board. And whether they pick us seventh or sixth or fifth or fourth, I don't think really has a lot of a bearing. I think we'll compete with every team in the Big 12. We've done it before. I think we'll continue to do that. And if the ball bounces the right way a couple of times and uh, I think we'll be right there in the thick of things. I think if of all the sports that are in the Big 12, uh, no one will be happier to see Oklahoma and Texas go more so than softball because they truly have been dominant. Uh, you know, football, it's, they're hit and miss with Texas and Oklahoma but and, and, and the other sports. But it seems like softball, especially where Oklahoma's lost one game in two years, you'll be happy to see them move on. You'll be happy to take a shot at them, but, but future planning won't involve them. Well, right. I mean, it's an honor to play against them. And Michael White at Texas is a good friend of mine. And it's a, I mean, it's exciting to be able to play those teams. But I would say probably if you took a poll of coaches uh, anonymously, there's not too many of us that are upset that Oklahoma's moving on. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it hard? To, we've got some of the folks in the chat, you know, I'm just Cromwell saying, hey, I'm, I'm here and I'm going to go to that OU game. Is it hard to get tickets at OU to, to get a game? How are these road venues um, for fans? Because I think what's going to surprise a lot of people in, in this league in softball is how many folks there are to support all of the teams that come in 
on the road. And it's not because they're traveling out to the game. There's just a bunch of folks everywhere you go. And I'm certain, Gordon, that you'll have a nice representation wherever. How, is it hard to get tickets to like an OU game there? I would say OU in Texas, it's probably something you want to get early because I think they both sell out. Uh, Oklahoma State probably is really close to that. So I would say anybody that wants to see us play on the road ought to do their their work early and try to get a ticket early rather than wait until game day because they might not get one. Gordon Eakin, softball coach, is with us. Jerem Jordan will join us at the top of the hour here on uh, Blockbuster Monday Wise Guys. Let's talk about your schedule because it's, uh, it's a great – schedule prep to get you ready for the Big 12. Uh, we mentioned uh, over in Hawaii, you're going to play five games. That'll include Ole Miss and Hawaii. But then you go over to the Littlewood Classic in Tempe, Arizona, and you get games with Arizona State, Virginia Tech, Illinois State, Memphis, and Cal State Fullerton. That's a that's a pretty big week. Yeah, I mean, over in Hawaii, I mean, just starting the year out after we, we got to see dirt today for the first time in I don't know, 70, 80, 90 days, whatever that was. So yeah. that was really nice for us, but not really getting to to see dirt too much other than this week. Um, the first tournament out of the shoot against good weather schools is always a challenge. And then we go right from there uh, to Arizona with Arizona State and Virginia Tech, which are two top 20 teams. Um, Virginia Tech is very good. Arizona State is always good, especially in their own ballpark. Um, Illinois State is 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 really good, and then Cal State Fullerton's been a tournament team the last few years, and so we definitely have a tough preseason schedule getting ready to go into the gauntlet of the Big Twelve. If I would have had my way, um, I I probably wouldn't have had quite so difficult a preseason schedule. I might have had a few cupcakes in there, but it it's hard to do that in softball when you're asking to be in people's tournaments. You kind of get what you get. Hey, look, that, I, I can't see a better way to break in those new arms yeah, than, than ready throwing to, them up against you'll, these You'll guys. know whether you're six deep on the pitching staff <laughs> by the time you come into that home opener. Home opener, Big 12 opener, is Texas Tech in a series that will run from March 7th to March 9th. Um, what will, will that be like to have your first Big 12 opponent and one that's staying in the league that will be you know, a, a league rival for years to come? Well, it's exciting. It's exciting and... Um, March 7th, it could be, in Utah, it could be 70 degrees. It could be a foot of snow. We don't know what to expect. But we feel like uh, we have that early advantage because we're used to the, we're used to it snowing six inches in the morning and then being able to play in the afternoon. And so <laughs> we're, we're excited to welcome Texas Tech. And then I think Oklahoma State directly after that into our springtime softball and and hopefully we can get our fans to come out for that to support it. It'll be it'll be a great way to start. Like March seventh last year, I think we did have a foot of snow, so we're due. But we can melt for it. We, we degrees. can melt it off those fields, right? Like we can, as long as it's okay by the afternoon, we got it. We can play, right? Yeah, I mean, last year there was no melting it off because we had more snow than ever in my lifetime. But this yeah. year seems to be a little bit more on the normal side, and so. Uh, early morning flurry of snow we've many times we've played in the afternoon after that it's a fun environment over there at gail miller field uh middle of uh, march there's march madness with basketball and and that's when you're going to go to texas take on the longhorns uh, march 14th through the 16th and then at utah march 18th and then back for oklahoma state march 21st through the 23rd if you eliminate Texas and Oklahoma, and we will because they're leaving. But you take them out of the out of the mix. Is Oklahoma State then right there as a key contender? Yeah, yeah, they certainly have been the last few years. They're a World Series team, and he always puts together a a great team. He has great success in the transfer portal. So I would say Oklahoma State, you know, is is definitely a World Series quality team, and will will pick up right where. Oklahoma and Texas leave off. Your your home finale uh, is against Kansas May second through fourth. Another, you know, program's going to be a long time rival over the years. Be ninety five in those. Yeah, games. it could. It could. Yeah, we'll start the year wondering if it's gonna <laughs> if it's gonna snow, and then by May you never know. It could be ninety on May second through fourth. 
Um, what, what's, what's your expectation for Kansas coming into this year? And, and you know, that'll cap the regular season before the Big 12 tournament. Well, Kansas is a little bit, in my uh, opinion, like their football team. They are um, – a lot of people overlook Kansas, but they have a great coaching staff and they're on the upswing and on any given day, they can beat anybody. So I think Kansas will be a real test for us as well as every other team in the Big 12. Big 12 tournaments, May 8th through the 11th in Oklahoma City. Um, as, you, as you look at this gauntlet uh, of a schedule, and I think we've asked every coach and used the same word gauntlet yeah, because they've all been tough. that's what it looks like. <laughs> um, and you think back to the WCC where you were very successful. LMU was the, the contender with BYU, and, and now you almost have like you've got 10 LMUs or maybe more than that uh, in this Big 12. And basketball kind of gauged it with their experience with Gonzaga. Okay, it's going to be Gonzaga every night. Uh, those battles with LMU, which often determined who got to the NCAA tournament, especially in recent years, uh, is that a precursor to every single battle in the Big 12? I think it's, I mean, no disrespect to LMU. They're a quality <coughs> program with great coaches, but LMU, their strength was in their pitcher. Yeah. Um, she was really good and she carried them. But now going into the Big 12, you have that type of pitching throwing against you with the best hitters in the country hitting off you. So I would say it's LMU on steroids. <laughs> on, on legal steroids. So they don't test for those. Correct. Uh, that, that, Correct. Sounds, that sounds like what every coach is, yeah. is told. Like, and they, it's, it's like they've Mountain said, hey, Dew uh, with the extra stuff in it. Yeah, it's like it's it's crazy. And so you've watched the other sports on campus make their Big 12 debuts. We've We've had a chance to watch soccer, women's volleyball, football, men's and women's basketball. What'd you learn watching what they've gone through in this first season? Uh, and, and what's your thought on going through this debut season? I think what I've learned is Jennifer Rockwood has an elite program. And it, I mean, the WCC in soccer with Santa Clara and some of those other schools was, was elite. But Jen just puts together an incredible program every single year. I think she's... I mean, I respect her so much. What I've learned about the Big 12, I think, right now, watching football, I learned a lot that there's definitely it's one week after another. There's no rest. But I I think every time I watch basketball, my palms are sweaty during the game while I'm sitting <laughs> on my couch. I mean, that is just such intense competition in basketball. And I'm I'm thinking we're going to – we're going to have to be resilient and be able to pick ourselves up off the ground when we get knocked down. And I think my palms are going to be sweaty during the softball season as well. But I, I think our kids can handle it. I, I hope we represent as well as Mark Pope's teams have because I am so impressed with what basketball is doing right now in that conference. And I'm hoping that we can do the same. Hey, even women's hoops the other day took fourth rank Kansas State to yeah, the that wire. Was, that was something they had, had a chance to win it. Well, and I think about, I think there, there are some parallels because Mark Pope's team was picked to finish 13th of 14 yeah. in this Big 12. Nobody's saying that now. And Well, and, you, you know, the funny thing is, is they might finish 13th out of 14th. That's, that's, true. Right that's that true. That's but they're true. But still, they're still a, a higher seed in the in the tournament because that's just the conference. Yeah, yeah, you're right. A couple more questions for Gordon Eakin. Uh, on our live stream, Richard from Panama. Let's see, we've got uh, Sam from Bakersfield. Others chiming in. But here's a question from Bobby Gardner, Coach. Does Utah still have a men's open class fast pitch league? Miller Toyota was always fun to watch during the days of 47, uh, the July 24th Invitational, and you played in that for a long, long time. Does that still Is that still a thing? Well, I played in that for Larry Miller Toyota, yeah. which was yeah. terrific memories, and maybe he got to see me play. But that that has men's fast pitches died out <clears throat> in Salt Lake and all over the country. It's a shame, but it's it's alive and well for the women. But it it really has kind of gone by the wayside for for men's fast pitch. All right, Bobby, there's your answer. Yep. All right, let's finish with this one, Coach, and we're looking forward to watching you play all season long, and we'll call all the games on ESPN Plus uh, with our BYU TV crew. Uh, you got the 49ers, you got the Chiefs next week. I'm, I, I'm sure that uh, you've, you've got loyalties to Andy Reid, but 
There's also Fred Warner uh, on the other side. Who do you got and why? Well, I love Fred Warner and Steve Young, but I'm a I'm a chief. Yeah. I just I respect Andy Reid so much, and then you know I don't know how you can watch that quarterback on that Chiefs team. Mahomes. Mahomes, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I knew his name, but I just that's what I'm saying is I don't know how anyone can watch him and not want to bundle their insurance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well said. Andy's done a lot of commercials these days too. Like it's so fun to watch him um, do do insurance commercials as well. Yeah, I, I mean we we figure Andy's a a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think oh, that yeah. that's that's a question, sure. right? But now the question is, they go in and win another one. That'd be three. That's three and. Andy's done it like Bill Belichick, you know, we talk about who's the greatest and you know we go back to the old days with Don Shula, of course, and, and some of these guys. But in the modern era, you talk about Belichick or Reed at this point. Belichick did it with one quarterback the whole time in one franchise. Andy took an Eagles program that was terrible um, with a quarterback that I think was average, Donovan McNabb, and won like six NFC championships and went to uh, a Super Bowl. Then he takes the Chiefs, and they were miserable when he got there. And he, and he got him to an AFC championship with Alex Smith, for Pete's sakes. And then now he's multiple Super Bowls with Patrick Mahomes. So here's the question for you. This is a hard one. Is he better than Bill Belichick? Is Andy a better coach than Bill Belichick? You asking me that? Yeah. yeah. Come on, Gordon. Absolutely. Gornow. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you didn't even hesitate. No. No hesitation at all. I think, I think Andy is is the best of the best and i love belichick but and i will say this about the 49ers uh you know i really re the reason why i would not be totally disappointed if the 49er won 49ers win is because of purdy and mm -hmm. how he said that he's defined in god and i just in today's day and age i just really respect someone who dares to stand up and say that that he feels that way. I think that's, it's a little bit hard to get criticized when you say that. So when I, last night, as I was cheering for the lions to win, every time Purdy ran the ball and killed us, oh yeah, <laughs> I just remembered what he said about that and kind of eased the pain a little bit. So go chiefs. But if the Niners win, it's for Purdy. All right. I saw there a tweet that said, Mr. Irrelevant is Mr. Relevant. Oh, yeah. With Brock Purdy. He's been that and good. He, he doesn't get enough credit. I was talking to a buddy who's been in the Bay Area, former All-American linebacker from Oregon. He's like, this kid doesn't get enough credit. Like, yeah. the fans haven't embraced him the way they should. Well, he's getting it now. He win the Super yeah. Bowl. You yeah, get you, it. You, get, you get a chance. So. Coach, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. And enjoy the sunshine tomorrow and the next day. Let's just live for the next two days. Don't don't look to the weekend. Let's let's just enjoy tomorrow and Wednesday as the softball team gets ready for the for the season. And uh, you'll be on the road for a long time, but we'll see you when you get back for Texas Tech for sure. And and I hope you think about us because we're going to be thinking about you when you're over in Manoa in Hawaii. We we will be wishing we were with you. Well, and we will uh, wish you were with us, but we'll enjoy it even though you're not there. And I think that was well said. I think all of us need to enjoy every day and quit trying to look forward because you got to be thankful for what you have right this minute. 800 wins, the great Gordon Eakin. Thank you, Coach. We'll see you at the ballpark. Amen to that. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks. What a successful – there's no coach with more wins than, oh, than Gordon Eakin on campus. Yeah. And, that, and that's a program that will compete right away, like he said, and they'll, be, they'll compete in the long haul too. Such, such a great coach over such a long time and such a good man. We'd love, love having Gordon on the show.